I do believe there's been corruption and I do see the contradictions and I do agree with you on that. Why would then I now have faith in Hadith? Let's say we're looking at all Abrahamic faiths and the laws. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm confused why stoning would be allowed in one for one people one time. And then now Jesus would say, do not stone. Let he who's without sin cast the first stone, which is more of a kind of like a forgiving type of a, a less severe, let's say, you know, punishment, and then it would come back. I just don't understand why. Is it wrong or is it not wrong? Is it punishable or is it not punishable? I'm originally Egyptian and of a Coptic background. Um, I've been watching a lot of your videos and I just, I had some questions because I have been looking into, you know, because I'm very lost and, and confused about certain things. So I just had some questions because I have been doing some reading and stuff. And uh, I know that you're very knowledgeable and I feel like, forgive me if some of your of the questions I have have already been answered, because I know you have a lot of videos, so I don't want to make you repeat yourself a million times, but um, it's no, just okay. one main question. Okay, go ahead. So I know that uh, there's the the Quran and then the Hadith. And I would say I've read most of the Quran Mm -hmm. and mostly everything makes sense. And mostly everything, you know, you could just Google if it's not clear and things like that. But what I I haven't really really been convinced with is why some things in Hadith uh, that are considered sahih or authentic can sometimes either there's different um, Hadith that, talk about the same thing, but have slightly different versions. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is just what I've Googled, so I could be wrong. Um, And it could also contradict the Quran. Like, for example, when it comes to stoning of married adulterers, why that's not mentioned in the Quran, but it is something that we see in Hadith that was practiced or, uh, you know, considered... um, applicable. So that's what I wanted to know, because as someone, let's say, who's from a Christian background where I, you know, I do believe there's been corruption and I do see the contradictions and I do agree with you on that. Why would then I now have faith in Hadith when I, you know, because the, the, do you know what I'm trying to say? There's two questions in one question. So the first thing is, the idea is that there's different, slightly different wordings Uh uh, delivering the same meaning. Uh Yeah. A hadith with, with different wordings that deliver the same meaning. And there are another thing which is not just a question of a claim that these hadith contradict the Quran. And then you brought the uh, hadith about stoning. Yes. And and you're saying that contradicts the Quran. Is that what you're claiming? Based on what I read, I did not see. I saw the part about flogging. I didn't see anything about stoning of of um, married adulterers. And forgive me if I'm wrong, but that's what I understood. Is that it's it's in hadith. It's not in Quran. Do you know? Okay. Do you know what a contradiction is? Well, uh, from, I mean, a contradiction could be one place saying one thing, and then in a, in another, let's say, chapter, it says some the opposite or something different. A contradiction is two statements that cannot uh-huh. be reconciled. Okay. But what you're saying there is that there is not two statements that cannot be reconciled. All you're saying is one thing is not in the Quran and it is in the Hadith. That does not mean it's a contradiction. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, so you uh, all what is going on there is that there is extra information within the hadith that is not in the Quran. The reason I'm asking you these questions is that we have to be very clear in the terms that we use. You know, so if yeah. I say there is a contradiction between the Quran and hadith, this is a problem now because yeah. they're both supposed to come from the the creator, the, the same creator. But if I say something is in the hadith is not in the Quran, that's not an issue at all. Uh, why? Because we believe that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, Isa he came, and his mission is to explain the Quran. And the Quran itself says that the Prophet is the one who explains the Quran. And also the Quran itself states that the Prophet speaks revelation and he gets revelation from God. Uh-huh. It says, for example, in Surah Najm, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى So the Prophet uh-huh. والسلام, does not speak of his own desires, does not speak of his own, there's only revelation given to him. So when the Prophet والسلام, says to us about stoning, which he himself applied, to, to certain companions when they when he was alive, he applied the punishment to Al Ghamidiyah, Ma'iz Al Ghamidiyah, which were two the companions of the Prophet. He applied the punishment to them, uh-huh. which shows that this punishment is revelation come from God. Now, does it have to be in the Quran? No, not everything in the Sharia, in in our tradition, our belief as Muslims has to be in the Quran. If uh-huh. everything has teachings were in the Quran, the Quran will probably be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of words and no uh-huh. one will be will ever be able to read it so if the quran has all of the descriptions of the prayer if the quran has all of the descriptions of the zakah if the quran has all of the descriptions of of saw if the quran uh-huh. has all of the script, uh, descriptions of wudu and what you can do what, what breaks your wudu the pillars of the prayer all of these things which are in books of fiqh and all of these extra things which the prophet ﷺ told us about the exact timings of the prayers the, the exact units the rakaat how many unit you do when uh-huh. you pray the prophet ﷺ is the one who explains 
these things. The Prophet is the one who tells us the exact extra details of these issues. So not everything is in the Quran. Muslims do not believe everything is in the Quran. So yes, there are things, there are teachings that are in the Hadith that are not in the Quran. We have no uh -huh. issues with them. And stoning the adulterers is one of them. Uh -huh. The Prophet himself, 1,400 years ago, he predicted that there were people, the people will come. So uh, this is just evidence that the Hadith uh -huh. is true. This, what I'm about to say, is evidence that the Hadith is true. Why? Because the Hadith itself says there is a hadith that this is over a thousand years is, is there in the books yeah, the hadith yeah. says the prophet ﷺ, he said that in the future someone will come that he he's inclining on his couch which means uh -huh. that he's not done any work no research nothing and then he will say hasbun al quran uh -huh. Uh, whatever look it's enough for us the quran whatever is there we're going to follow it what is halal is halal and whatever is haram is haram so the prophet والسلام, he predicted this phenomena of people coming in the future and then they're saying that it's enough for us the quran whatever is there we're going to we're going to follow so that's evidence that the hadith is true because this is the reality that we see in our in our uh, in front of our eyes today which yeah. shows that this is a revelation a prophecy given by the prophet okay? okay so allah says in the quran that the prophet will explain the hadith allah says in the quran so the Prophet does what? Bayan. He explains. He does okay. explanation of the Quran. And Allah mm -hmm. commanded us to whatever the Prophet gives us, we follow. That means the Prophet will give us certain things and he will forbid us from other things, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. also Allah says in the Quran, uh, uh, This is the Prophet. He will make certain things permissible and make certain things impermissible. And these things, if the Prophet is doing them, they're not necessarily in the Quran, are they? Because if in the Quran, then Allah already made them halal and haram. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. okay. So is this point clear now about extra teachings in the Hadith and not in the Quran? Yes. The second point you mentioned about different, slightly different wordings. We have something called reporting the hadith with the ma'na. Uh -huh. Narrating the hadith, riwayatul hadith bil ma'na. The narra narrating the narration with meaning. So uh, the, the companions, uh, this is permissible for anyone to do. To narrate a, narr a narration, to say the Prophet ﷺ said X, and then to give the meaning. It does not have to be the exact wording of the Prophet ﷺ, as long as certain conditions apply, which is that you understand the meaning, what uh -huh. the Prophet ﷺ meant, number one. And number two, whatever words you use conveys the same meaning that the Prophet ﷺ and the companions they used to narrate certain ahadith with the meaning so they oh. understood what the prophet ﷺ meant and they used slightly different words to give the exact same meaning question uh -huh. is where are, are these ahadith that they, you, these different words the wordings that you see in the hadith all of them are conveying the same meaning if they are conveying more than one meaning then they are separate ahadith that the prophet ﷺ said said them in different instances okay i understand okay so um, do you, yeah. does that clarify the two questions or yes is it okay, okay. if i ask another one yeah, of course. Go ahead. Yeah. So if I look at the whole picture, if I look at Judaism, Christianity and Islam and Islam is meant to be the the, the perfection of deen, of, of religion. Right. And I know that in Islam, Judaism or the, the scriptures of Judaism and, and the Bible are considered corrupted in some way. But there is still some truth in there. We just don't know what's what. If I look at, let's say, in, in terms of the laws in Judaism, uh, I believe that stoning was also applicable. I'm just using stoning as an example, but stoning was applicable for adultery. And then when and then when we read the Bible, uh, I think it's chapter Luke, I'm not sure, but when Jesus is presented with, they wanted to stone an adulterous woman, and he said, let thee who has not sinned cast John. the first stone. John chapter 7. John, thank you. And then when the prophet um, Muhammad came, he said, we will bring back stoning. So when I look at, let's say we're looking at all Abrahamic faiths and the laws, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm confused why stoning would be allowed in one for one people one time. And then now Jesus would say, do not stone. Let he who's without sin cast the first stone, which is more of a kind of like a forgiving type of a, a less severe let's say uh you know punishment and then it would come back i just don't understand why is it wrong or is it not wrong is it punishable or is it not punishable okay is i think if you think about what you said you've already answered your own question okay how, how did you answer your own question you stated first that these books are corrupt uh -huh. okay yeah. then you mentioned the statement in these books if these books are corrupted then how do we know that jesus actually made that statement which you mentioned that he said the uh, let the first person without sin cast the stone. We don't know for sure. Yeah. So if the books is corrupted and uh -huh. something in that book suddenly contradicts all the tradition that was there from the time of Abraham, uh -huh. then it's most likely corrupted. So if there is something in the scripture and we know that scripture is corrupted and that statement goes against 
whatever people were upon since the beginning, uh -huh. that is a sign that that scripture is corrupted. Now, do you know what the interesting thing is? No. If you open, if you open, uh, if you open the NIV, for example, yeah, they will say to you this this story is a fabrication. The Christians themselves about the oh really? Yes, the story of the adulterous woman. It's a fabrication, according to Christians. Really? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We've always been, uh, you know, it, I know it depends on the church, but I've always read King James Version. I did not, I never opened the NIV because I always felt like it was not, a, I mean, I felt like older English, even though English had nothing to do with that time. For, I felt like it would be a more accurate translation, but uh, I did not know that NIV, NIV said that. Yeah, other 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 uh, uh, versions as well say, like the RSV, etc. It's just probably King James has the story. So even the other versions which would have it, they will have a note that this does not exist in the earliest manuscript. So this story with the testimony of Christians themselves is a fabrication. Uh -huh. And that, that now should make a lot more sense because look, now the teachings of God, they were always consistent. All of a sudden we see a difference. Why is there a difference? Because it's a corruption. It's added by people. It's not uh -huh. really from God. And this story is very famous, by the way, yeah? They always say yeah. it in the churches, yeah? They always mention it in the churches. The reason yeah. they mention it in the churches is because it's a fabrication. All of a sudden, I, the whole religion, unfortunately, of Christianity today, in the churches, they're always basing things on fabrications because they, there is nothing in the scripture which really supports the traditions because uh -huh. in reality, as we said, Jesus uh -huh. taught whatever all the prophets of God, peace be upon them, taught. The same thing, that right. there's one creator worthy of worship. He did not teach anyone to worship him. Right. And then so, uh, and I know that in uh, in your other videos and, and other videos I've seen, I know that there's obviously a big difference between the way prophets are described in the Bible or in the, whether old, mostly in the Old Testament and in the Quran. Um, and and I know that the, the, the argument is that they're not always described in a very good way. Like when we look at um, the story of the, I think uh, with the prophet Noah and that whole, you know, scenario when he was, um, Drinking alcohol, you know that story. Lot, lot. Uh, not, not, is it lot or? Yes, lot of this. Okay. So, 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 my question is, why? What would be the benefit for people to change those stories about the prophets to make them seem not as perfect or not as good as they are, the way they are described in the Quran? Like, what would be the benefit of doing that? It's not only the prophets. The children of Israel had an issue with God and the prophets. They mm -hmm. even deviated and changed the perception of God. They made God as an angry God who forgets and regrets and all of these attributes that are not befitting the majesty of the creator. And he rests on the seventh day. So these are only corrupt things, which is to do with the prophets. They corrupted things, which is to do with God. Uh -huh. We know the children of Israel literally killed the prophets of God. So let, al let alone change the scripture uh -huh. for, yeah. to make them look bad. They literally killed them. Yeah. Even Matthew says the same thing. There's a whole chapter in Matthew about the, the children of Israel killing the prophets. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. this is a reality. They were a disobedient nation. They did not like the prophets of God because they told them to do good. They mm -hmm. enjoyed them to, to do good and forbade them from doing evil. And they were not okay with God as well. They had issues with God and with the, with the prophets of God. So it makes perfect sense that they would change the perception of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah. that's the best they could do. They cannot do anything to the creator. So all they can do is just they can change the words and the perceptions to make people so they can make people believe wrong things about God. And the prophets, they already have prof problems with the prophets. Uh -huh. So they would attribute to them evil. And just using common sense, if someone, God is sending you someone and that someone is supposed to be teaching, yeah. if he has intercourse with his own daughters, would you learn from him? No. It's common sense, isn't it? If these of people course. were liars, if these people were like, quote unquote, what they show David to be, going and killing, sending someone to be killed in the in the war so he can have his wife, would you trust me if I, if you know, I look, there is a worker of mine and I like his wife, so I will send mm -hmm. him to war to die so I can have his wife. And you know, I did this. Would you learn from me, come to learn from me about goodness and about God and morality? Will you come to me? No, you're evil. Yeah, so common sense would say that it doesn't make any sense that these scriptures would claim those are examples to, to be followed, that are uh -huh. sent to the people so they can follow them. And in the same time, they say, oh, and, and the Bible calls right a, a, a lot of righteous person. Yeah, that story with the giving, wanting to give his daughters and all that, I never understood how that was, uh, you know, that portrayed him as a good person. I don't think that, you know. Yeah, is, but uh... What I want you to think about is this, is it calls lot a righteous person, which would mean one of two things. Mm -hmm. Either the story is fabricated and Lot was a righteous person, peace be upon him, mm -hmm. or God is saying incest is a righteous act. You have to pick your poison. Right. Right? It's either you would say this is a fabrication, which is what we say, and therefore that makes sense. It makes sense for certain verses to praise Lot because he was a righteous servant. 
Yeah. And this is our, our perception, right? Or you would say, you know what? No, actually, it's not. I believe nothing's corrupted there. Okay, then you shouldn't have any issues with incest, you know? But, yeah. Uh, as a Christian, you know, it's one of the two. So that's what we say as Muslims. If you just apply common sense, you have to come to that conclusion. There is corruption in the scripture. And it makes perfect sense, the Islamic perspective, that th this is revelation from God. And, and, and it was changed by the people. And the, and the Quran is coming to bring people back to life. Mm -hmm. okay. to, to monotheism, yeah. Yes. To light, light, which is the light of God. To the light, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, before you go, <laughs> any other yeah. questions you have? I do, I have a lot of questions, but I don't want to, I know there's other people waiting. Well, let me ask you this, right? What is yeah. stopping you from actually taking the step and embracing Islam? Well, I'm still at the beginning of, of doing my research, and it's a big thing, you know. It's a very big thing, because I know for people, let's say, born into a religion, like Islam, you're born into it, you don't really, you have to learn your own religion, but for people who are changing, um, especially from people of our backgrounds, as you know, it's a very big thing. And so I don't want to rush into anything. And I, and I want to be able to, let's say, if I were to, God forbid, uh, die tomorrow, I want to feel like I am 100% sure of, you know, uh, you know, what I can expect in the afterlife and, and feel like in my soul, I made the right decision. So I'm still doing the, my research, to be honest with you. That's but I, I hmm. yeah, but I, I, I do watch your videos and I think that you are uh, really great at what you do and you have a lot of knowledge and what, everything you say is very logical, makes a lot of sense. And I like things that are logical, that they, you don't have to do mental gymnastics <laughs> to, to understand it. Because I do agree that if you're going to worship a God, you need to know who he is what are his characteristics that's all very very important it needs to be clear it cannot just be um you know some uh wishy-washy gray thing in your mind that is that you're always trying to talk yourself into you know so mm -hmm. i'm still yeah. i'm still learning but yeah that's where i'm at right now no problem no problem okay i'm here if you've got questions you can come back at the front time you can also email me if you've got certain questions and then hopefully inshallah we can deal with them but uh this is the thing about islam the more you learn about islam the more mm -hmm. you realize why it's true. This is, you know, what I can say about Islam, okay? Yes, so, I will be I'll honest you with you. Sorry, yes. I'll just say one thing no, and no, then we can always talk another time. But when it comes to the Quran, I, I don't really, I can't say there's anything that I, that is not clear or that bothers me. My 99% of my concerns, or let's say things that I'm still not fully convinced on are come from Hadith, to be completely honest with you. Um, but, but, you know, I could, we could talk uh, some other time or I can come back on with other questions. Yeah, no problem. As I said, you brought some questions about hadith. We dealt with them. Uh -huh. And uh, if you can, if you got any other questions, it's also this easily dealt, dealt with, inshallah, when it comes to the hadith. There's no problem. So, uh, so I'll much. let you go. No problem. Thank you. Pleasure.